Hello, beautiful artists. Today I'm playing a little bit with my Filbert brush. Now, this is the Filbert Princeton Select. It's kind of their student grade um, Filbert, but, and they sell these at Michael's as well. So give them a try because I think if I could only have two brushes in my collection, it would be the Filbert and the Round 8. Um, they're just my favorites. So today I wanted to show you some of the brush strokes and flowers I can create with the Filbert brush and just invite you to maybe paint along with me. The paper I'm using, by the way, is, uh, as you know, my very, very favorite. I even love the colors of their covers, um, which they just changed this year. It's not 100% cotton paper, but you guys, I've tried every student grade paper and I'm sold on this one. It's, um, they're just wonderful. They have a great texture. They do really well. I painted this yesterday and this was, I saturated this paper and it did pretty good. If I had taped it, it wouldn't have curled and I can flatten this, but it handles a lot of water very well. And it's just got a beautiful texture and it's affordable. I can't paint on arches every day, you guys. I just, maybe one day, but not now. And I just love this and I use it in my workshops. This is the nine by 12. As you know, I share these wonderful, their little journals. And I've had a few of you ask me about these again. And they changed this cover too. Look how beautiful. Not that that matters, but I'm so into aesthetics. So it's not cotton, but um, again, the texture is fabulous. And I keep these little journals for every season. Um, for my color swatches, for practices, for brush strokes, and I refer back to them. I just date them and I'll say, you know, winter 2023. So I love these artistas. I just can't talk enough about them. For the few of you that are like, I got to have 100% cotton, I get it. Um, the Meaden. These are the two papers I specifically use unless I'm doing a commission for somebody and then I'll use the arches. I would even probably do a commission on the Meaden. 100% cotton, to be very honest. I mean, the textures, I, I would use these Artistos, but I love the Meaden paper. And it is on a block, which just means it's sealed on all edges. Um, but if you do just want to use 100% cotton, the Meaden is very reasonable as well. So enough of that. Today I'm going to be using my Paul Rubens My Lane Paints because that's kind of how I roll. And I'm going to be playing with um, this pink color. And what I want to show you, for those of you that maybe haven't had the opportunity yet to um, play with a filbert brush, you guys got to get a filbert brush. Um, I'll find my link for this Select, Princeton Select, which is really reasonable. I bought it a long time ago. It literally, if you like flowers, this is just such an amazing brush. So let me show you. You can use the brush sideways, okay? So you can get these lines for stems, for whatever you want. Now, if I wanted to put a little bit of pressure and lift up, I get a perfect, I mean, without any effort, I get the most perfect um, daisy petal or five petal, whatever you want. And this is using the brush, um, I guess this is kind of subjective, but I would call this um, probably, I'm just gonna say sideways. And I'm holding it about at 10 o'clock facing me, light pressure, pull and lift up. I mean, these are petals for anybody. Anybody could do these petals. Push, lift, pushed, lift. There you go. So, but the thing is, is you can also get this thinner line for your stems and things like that. Not as thin as I can get, of course, with the point on my eight round, but you can still get pretty thin. Now, the other way to use this is 
I, I call this floor horizontal or flat. I'm using the flat of the brush and you would do the same thing. Push and lift and perfect shape little petals. Whenever you get that blotch, just pull it. Okay, so those are perfect little petals. Now, if you wanted to, you could push and start to twist and you get a tip on your petal. All right, so push like that, push like that. And you get this little tip here. So I'm just twisting my brush. All right, so those are two really just easy, easy. Do a whole page of these. The other thing is too, you can get a very wide, like um, not just for florals, but I can create, like for a pe peony, it gives me such a great variety of brush strokes for that peony. So the front of my peony might look, holding the brush horizontal, and medium pressure resting my wrist here. And I'm just filling it in and I'm kind of flicking my brush inwards. And then, so that's the beginning of my peony. Now if I wanna use my the side of my brush like I did up here, I can just kind of come in and then I might go back to using spreading out that brush, spreading it out like so. I mean, it just, I'm kind of, now those are just using the side of my brush like so. And then I'm gonna go in there and just touch in a bit into these areas so I'm constantly, with my filbert brush, I'm turning and doing things sideways. Then I might go up and around, and I'm using the tip of the brush now, but because it's shaped in a petal shape, it's automatically giving me these little fun, fluffy, peony-type petals here like so. And this is a very rough draft, you guys, of this peony, but I wanted to show you what this brush can do because it's just so much fun. Now I could go in and do a leaf as well. So point, press, and I turn, point, press. You could also do leaves with the side of the brush, little dabs. Let's do another one over here using, oops, using the tip of my brush, so light pressure. And then I start pushing and draw up again to light pressure. Point, press, like that. So this brush, honestly, if I had to do that picking, this would be the brush I would choose. If I could only have one brush, boy, I don't know, you guys. That would be tough. I love my round brush. So there you go. And I'm trying to think if there's another flower. So the daisy comes to mind. Let's get a yellow color just because daisies can be any color, but I'm gonna do mine yellow. So I'm gonna use a little bit of my, my laying. And I'm gonna draw, as you know, just to get you in the habit, I always kind of have my center point for my flower. Actually, let's do a bigger one. So here's my center point. Now I wanna make sure all of my petals are pointing towards the center point. Okay, so we're looking at this kind of sideways here. So watch how easy. I'm just going to point, start pressing, pull up. I'm using the side of my brush, or actually, see I'm kind of going back and forth horizontal flat edge, but I'm using the tip point and then I start pressing up point press up and look at those beautiful 
petals that I get. This, by the way, is the first point press up. Point press up. And then I just do these little half moons for the back. Look how beautiful. So I mixed that. I kind of double dip my brush in orange on one side and yellow on the other, and it gave me that. This is the first when, if any of you, and I know there's some of you out there that either via Zoom or um, have come in person to my workshops, this is the first flower I teach. And we don't actually use the filbert brush, but these are the petal shapes that we do. And then let me just try and get my, my filbert brush here is kind of old, so it's probably not as thin as a brand new one might be, but I can even get a pretty thin line for my little stem here. And then for the petals, all I would do, point, press, like that. And there you go. Let me just color in that center area. Let's do that. Let's grab some yellow again. But I'm gonna lighten that yellow up a bit because CAD yellow is pretty, pretty intense. And just use the flat of the brush, rinse. And I'm going to grab just a tiniest bit. So I'm I'm wiping off my brush because I don't want it to have too much water. I want to work damp. So when we talk about wet and wet, really for beginners, I always advise go damp into damp. No wet because wet is just a little bit hard to control for a beginner. And then I just go around the edges here and I'm just dabbing in with a little bit of brown. And there you go. That was all done with the filbert brush. So there you go. I hope you give this brush a try. I will look for, like I said, I bought this so long ago, um, but I will look for this Princeton Select. Hopefully they still sell it. And it's a number eight. I seem to like the number eights, guys. They probably also have a Velvet Touch Princeton Select um, filbert, but uh, this one is the Select brand, which is, I believe they're student grade. So look at all the fun things. Before we go here, I'm just gonna go in here. Actually, let's just have a little bit of fun. And I have some white gouache in my palette here. Let's just pick up a little bit of that just to play. Sometimes I do this kind of spontaneously in my videos and I think, oh God, I hope this works. And I'm gonna go in with the flat of my brush and just add in. Funny because normally I would go the opposite way, right? I would go dark colors and then light. But this time, look how pretty that was. That's something new. I don't know why that just came to me. I just had that white in my palette. And sometimes gouache can be a little bit harder to get out of your brush. It's almost, I, I always look at gouache as kind of like a hybrid between watercolors and acrylics. So I put a little bit of white out there, white gouache on there, but let's add a little bit of pink too and see what that does. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. I've never done this, you guys, so glad this is kind of working. Just using the side of my brush. That's kind of cool, you guys. I'm so glad I just tried this. With that white. That's, that's kind of cool. I think I may do a tutorial on that. There you go. So kind of fun. Um, again, I just kind of went into that whole bit with the white gouache 
kind of came up in the mo spur of the moment. But, you know, if you've been watching me here, that's kind of how I roll, right? All right, you guys. One last little thing I'm going to add in there because it'll drive me nuts if I don't. And this isn't going to be with the filbert brush. I got to add those little black do hickeys in the middle because it'll drive me nuts to leave it like this. So just adding in these dots. Look how pretty, you guys. I am. That's going to be my next tutorial is putting white gouache on there and then going over it with the pink. All right, you guys, I hope that was fun. I will go ahead and um, link that for you. I'll link my paper. It's what I use all the time. I'm not in their affiliate program. I just love the paper. It was a lifesaver for me. And practice some of these brush strokes. Play with them. I think you'll have a lot of fun with them. This filbert brush can almost paint the flower by itself. So thanks for being with me, everybody. I just love our little community we have here. You guys are so awesome. You challenge me. You inspire me. And just, I'm just so pleased to be here. I'm going to be coming up on a year in March and I can't wait. All right, you guys, thanks so much and happy painting.